here on the Colour of Country Life. Always good to catch up with Matt Dalgleish from Thomas Elder Markets. How are you, Matt? G'day, Ricky. I'm doing all right. Oh, that's good to hear. And I tell you what, the uh, cattle prices, we might start there, are doing very well for our producers at Wagga Wagga. Um, top in the charts on the Eastern Youngs Cattle Indicator this week. Yeah, that's right. So the Eckies started to climb again now. I think yesterday it closed at 1073 so heading back up towards that, you know, fabulous eleven dollar mark, which is, you know, not, look not unsurprising given I think we spoke about it a little while back that um, there's been a lot of rain through winter. You know, there's a lot of areas that have got a lot of moisture in the ground, and as we start to warm up in the south, that's going to mean uh, pretty strong grass growth and pasture. Um, so that's probably you know making farmers think twice, and we're heading into another pretty decent year next year by the look of the bureau's outlook for, for rainfall. So. Um, that's giving a bit of confidence to go back and, and start purchasing young cattle again. Well, I'm noticing there at Wagga, they're already past the $11 mark. Maybe they'll even hit 12 788 head traded at 11 uh, way out ahead of even Dolby, which usually gets great value. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, last year we saw a lot of that kind of strength in the restocker activity coming out of the northern markets in Queensland, like Dolby in particular was one of the real um, kind of standouts. But, yeah, obviously those more southern producers down in Wagga are starting to get on the bandwagon as well. Yep, I guess it's wet and staying wet is what they can see in terms of the paddocks and the growth and what they're going to, the growing conditions are expected for the next 12 months. Yeah, that's right. And, and like, you know, this time of the year in the south too with that, like I said, that warmer spring weather coming through, you can, when the sun does come out, you're starting to feel that heat in the sun uh, you know, so that'll that'll kind of start to get the pasture taken off, uh, and that's and that's what people are thinking. I think. Yep, in the Riverina, if it's anything like the weeds in my garden, there's plenty coming up out of the ground. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, the, sh- the uh, sheep side of the equation as well. As usual, huge volumes traded in somewhere like Wagga, and decent prices as well. That seems to have sort of stabilised in recent weeks, though. That the lamb price. Yeah, that's right. The prices are, are kind of sideways, pretty much. In the Eastern States, trade lamb indicators around that seven fifty cents a kilo. Which is, I mean, historically still pretty good pricing. But um, you're right in saying too that, that we are starting to see some numbers coming through at the sale yard, particularly in New South Wales. Um, I think we saw about a 28 percent increase on yardings uh, over last week, and that's you know that's about 34, 35 percent higher than you know the kind of average for this time of the year. So, so really strong volumes going through New South Wales. Uh, Victoria also lambs are starting to pick up at the sale yard. They're just coming off out of their winter slumber. Um, so we, we aren't seeing the big numbers in Victoria that we usually see in the spring flush. They're, they're kind of usually uh, towards the back end of October and into November is when the really big volumes start to come uh, from Victoria. But, but we are seeing that there's been a bit of an uptick in Victorian volumes um, off pretty low base. I think the Victorian numbers are up like 70% on the week. But it, it, like I said, it was off a pretty low base, so that's nothing to get too excited about now. But we are, we are seeing those spring lambs starting to present. Um, but prices are holding up, which is a good sign so far. Yeah, some of the prices in terms of local sale yards, it does appear at Corowa and Griffith on the river. Uh, they're some of the strongest prices, 814 at Griffith this week. Uh, so is there sort of a lesser supply factor going on there or just the demand so strong they just can't get enough of it? No, if you look at the slaughter volumes in New South Wales for lambs, they've been really strong as well. So I think there was that period of time through winter where processes in the south were struggling with labour and struggling with capacity. Um, it seems as though, at least for now, they've, they've favoured the lamb and their kill space. Um, so they're getting some really strong numbers going through on weekly slaughter rates for lambs. And I think that's reflected then in the, in the sale yard price too, that they are chasing these animals. Well, thankfully, we've recovered from the hiccup of concern about uh, whether foot and mouth disease might find its way into the country. We've still, I guess, got some vigilance uh, surrounding that. you see any other headwinds on the horizon, though, for our cattle and sheep producers? Oh, look, certainly um, there's still obviously issues with FMD in Indonesia and also lumpy skin. And that's causing a bit of a kind of a slowdown in demand for our live cattle trade. Um, so if you look at August, we saw, you know, fairly weak numbers there and particularly out of, um, you know, cattle going into Indonesia. I think it's down something like 63% on the normal levels to this time of the year. This is now is when we see our, our biggest numbers going and the Indonesians are just reluctant to take animals at the moment. So some of those northern, northern kind of cattle that would normally make their way to live export spaces are filtering down into the southern Queensland markets, I think. Um, but, you know, just something to keep an eye on, um, you know, in, in how that develops. Uh, obviously, from an Australian price perspective, yeah, we're out of the, out of the worst of those sell-offs. But um, it's one of those things with that with disease, we've got to continue to stay vigilant, I think, all the time. Absolutely right. Thank you so much, Matt Dalgleish, Thomas Elder Markets, for joining us today. We'll catch you again soon. Cheers, Ricky.